guys, it's Peter and Ice Cream Bar. Here's a story. So, once a guy, an okay cupid rando who ranked as my enemy, I don't remember how much, but really who care, asked me what sex I thought lied more. And I responded, because I think it's true, that lying has nothing to do with your gender, more so your personality. Of course, you could argue that one sex in particular, for societal reasons or familial reasons or whatever, was raised to outright lie more than the other sex, which is where this conversation got interesting. Well, it got interesting for me at least. The guy turned out to actually be not that smart, and when I tried to engage him in friendly debate, he said that he didn't understand what I was saying and stopped talking to me. So I bring this debate to y'all. This guy's idea was that girls lie more because stuff like makeup and push-up bras, high heels, hair extensions, so on and so forth are a lie. Well, this idea generally feels icky to me because it sounds too close to saying girls are actually uglier slash not as appealing slash attractive without these things or that girls who do these things are wrong because they're lying and generally lying is bad. I can still see where he's coming from. I mean, while most beauty products are designed to enhance your natural beauty, they are creating something that is not actually there. Yes, red lipstick is not the color of your actual lips. A push-up bra will make your boobs look bigger than they actually physically are. I guess the question there is when does enhancing become lying or is any enhancing at all a lie in itself? Of course you also have to take into account the reason for a beauty routine. Like if you have hair extensions and full face makeup and what have you just because you like the way it looks on you and you're doing it for yourself versus, you know, trying to impress your peers or sexual partner, does that make it less of a lie? Personally, I don't see any of it as a lie at all. A lie would be saying, yes, this is really what my skin looks like for really real. I promise. Which is kind of silly in a world where we know it's all just additions. I mean, don't we? It also calls to point the question of when beauty products go from being lies, possible lies, to social norms. I mean, people have been using things to enhance their natural looks since pretty much all of recorded history, so it's not like we're really doing anything new. And at some point, you could almost argue that it's more socially wrong to not do these things than to participate in them. In my personal opinion, again, this is my personal opinion, if foundation is a lie, then so is this shirt. I mean, everyone knows that my skin is not actually made of cotton, just like they know my skin is not actually photoshopped. I would certainly hope everyone knows those two things. And I don't see how one would be a lie, while the other would be a social norm. Fair or unfair, that's kind of the way the world has worked, both men and women. As a fairly avid wig wearer, I have sometimes caught myself thinking, oh gosh, oh gosh, what will so-and-so think of me when they realize this isn't my real hair? Even though I've never had a wig that was of such amazing quality that people definitely thought the whole time that it was definitely my real hair, like, yeah, no. And I catch myself thinking, while I'm thinking this, of this rando's argument that beauty products are lies. And by wearing one, in this example, a wig, I am lying to the people around me. Of course, his idea was focused on the point that women are lying to men about how they really look, which is ridiculous and, again, my main problem with his argument. But sometimes I can't help but wonder. Now, I've had wigs on in videos before, and in one of my videos, I actually took the wig off mid-filming and continued to film the rest of the video without the wig on with my natural hair. And I guess what I'm realizing is I'm trying less and less to convince people that a wig is my natural hair. And I'm wondering, is that part of this equation? When you are not trying to convince someone it's what you actually really look like for really real, does that make it less of a lie with whatever it is that you're wearing? But then what if who you feel like you are inside for really real is someone who just really loves wigs and loves wearing makeup and loves wearing high heels and you just really like that stuff just because it's fun and you have a fun time with the routine and that's representing your true self. Is it a lie then or is it not? I stand by my original opinion on this matter. I don't think that either sex inherently lies more than the other and I don't see doing it up as a lie either nor as an enhancement. I see it more as a routine, a comfort, a pastime, a way to build confidence and create visual interest which again in my opinion is different from you know sexuality or attractiveness. Anything you adorn your body with 
with extra hair, piercings, tattoos, tiaras, jeans, socks, beanies, beads. As long as you do this in a way that makes you feel confident, then you're pleasing yourself and I just don't see how that's a lie. But what do you guys think? Boys? Men? Ladies? Women? Girls? What's your opinion on this? As a final note, I will add this. Nowadays, the standard of beauty is totally unreachable. We all already know this, but photo editing, along with all we just talked about, all comes together to form men and women who are just far too beautiful than any person could ever naturally be. Now, I don't really have problems striving toward impossible goals. I think people tend to do that a lot in life, and that's okay, because if anything, it'll always be something to do and keep you busy. The problem is, right now, as a culture, we think people like Jennifer Lawrence and Angelina Jolie and Ryan Gosling and Ildris Elba are all beautiful people. Fair enough. Yet we also know we almost never see them outside of the scope of one, a place where their images are edited or enhanced by a stylist or a computer, or two, out of the lens of here comes movie star blankety blank colon glamorous beautiful person. So if the standard of beauty, which is them, we know is not true, what exactly is real beauty? Who is the judge of that? Is fake beauty real beauty? Are those people beautiful even though we know it's not true? Is real beauty fake? Does an individual decide who is beautiful to them on their own basis? Is that even possible to decide who's attractive without going back to a group consensus or having that group consensus on who is beautiful affect your choices? I think the answer is way more complicated than I can imagine and certainly more complicated than what I can put in this video. So please tell me what you think. Weigh in on this. I've been thinking about this recently, especially this last bit, and it's all been very confusing. Then again, I'm usually confused about something, so maybe it's just my new thing to be confused about. Look at my face. It's my confused face. What's going on? Anyway, thank you for watching. I hope that I gave you some thought-provoking thoughts, and I'll talk to y'all later. Bye! You're all beautiful to me. Also, thank you guys for over 200 subscribers. I didn't even realize that happened, and I am so grateful. You guys are awesome. Um, I'll try and make another doll video soon. I'm super happy you guys liked my last video, Why BJDs, so you can click over here to watch that or watch my most recent one, which is just some footage from my trip to Turks and Caicos, which is a really beautiful place. So if you're interested in either of those, clickety clack, I'll take you back to where they were. Yeah. Alright, you guys, I'm off to start my career as a rapper. Bye!